okay jai hind and uh, good morning to the students of uh, aps jammu i am extremely uh, grateful to goc 26 division uh channel neeraj gosai and the principal mrs puneet kaur for giving me this great opportunity to interact with you and uh, share my experiences and uh, it's a great honor and uh, it's a matter of great matter of pride for me that i'm uh, interacting with uh, such a lovely dynamic and uh, uh, you know energetic students of the aps jammu i have, have heard a lot about you before this i had an opportunity to speak to the children of aps pias and it was a very useful interaction now actually uh, i can only share my experiences with you all uh, being a foji and you know uh, most of our time we spend in jammu and kashmir and uh, i am from infantry uh, the grenadiers regiment and uh, foot soldier and i have been commissioned into this regiment in 1976 and uh, i retired in uh, 19 uh, 2010 and uh, now it is almost 12 years that i am out of the army but i feel very young in interacting with you all uh regarding uh, my unit it i had the opportunity to command uh, 18 grenadiers in uh, most of the times in kashmir valley chasing the militants and uh, then also i had the privilege to command my unit uh, during kargil war which you all are aware and i'm sure you must have uh, visited uh, the location also because it is in your state and uh, the famous peaks which you heard the name of uh, tiger hill and tololing my unit had the great opportunity to recapture tololing and tiger hill from the pak regulars then i also had a tenure in sri lanka as a com young company commander fought against the ltt i also took my unit to united mission in sierra leone uh, you know if you have heard of operation kokri in which we rescued 225 uh, un uh, peacekeepers they were taken hostages by the rebels there and out of this 220 belong to our country and uh, with this background i have great honor to apprise you that my unit 18 grenadiers under my command One seventy-five gallantry awards, which is a record. Fifty-two in uh, Kargil War, twenty in uh, counterinsurgency operations in Kashmir, and three in United Nations, you know, peacekeeping mission in Sierra Leone, making a tally of seventy-five uh, uh, gallantry awards. But on the other hand, we had to pay a very heavy price for this. for these victories and for the freedom of the country and for the freedom of our countrymen as you are aware in kargil we lost 527 young officers young jcos and men and more than 1300 got injured during the kargil war and uh, my unit we lost 30 34 members of my family two officers if you heard the name of colonel r vishwanathan we both were assaulting the tololing feature that was the first one and he died in my arms major rajesh adhikari was the company commander he also died in the battle of tololing similarly i lost two jcos and 30 jawans of it in grenadiers during the kargil war but the president of uh, india and the countrymen 
bestowed uh, 52 gallantry awards on my unit for the performance in kargil operations that includes uh, one paramveer chakra to grenadier yogendra yadav he was the youngest boy of 19 years of age uh, who has and he is the living legend and he got the paramveer chakra for his outstanding bravery two mahavir chakra one to major rajesh adhikari and one to captain balwan he was lieutenant then and six veer chakras and many others so i am very happy to share uh, the uh, kargil war and especially the actions of my unit in grenadiers with you all and uh, as you are aware that kargil happened in 1999 it uh, uh, was fought for two months it started in may mid may continued continued till 26 july that's why the 26 july is known as operation vijay on that day all the intruders were thrown back to the pakistan they were pushed back so the kargil you know i will uh, you know share my views with you in hindi as well as in english and let me tell you that jo kar ka kargil war hui thi pakistan jaise ki aapko sab jante hain ki ek bahut bada dhokha ya vishwas ghat jo pakistan ne kiya tha aur ek taraf if you recollect that there was a peace talk going with our then prime minister atal bajpai ji and uh, in lahore peace uh, talk were talks were going on aur dusri taraf jo the ki pakistan army you know they were creating this mischief aur unhone winters ka fayda utha kar aur there used to be a understanding that ki winters mein dono taraf ki fauje apni apni jagah wapas chali jati thi and uh, they came and occupied these heights aur takriban 150 वर्ग किलोमीटर जो जमीन थी उस पे उनके इंक्लूडर्स आ गए और शुरू में तो वो यही कहते रहे कि दीज आर दी मिलिटेंट्स मुजाहिदीन हैं एंड देयर आर नो रेगुलर्स लेकिन धीरे धीरे जैसे पता चला कि दे वर दी रेगुलर्स एंड व्हाट इज अमेजिंग इज दी द वे द इंडियन आर्मी रिस्पॉन्डेड दे द वे द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट रिस्पॉन्डेड we were there is no doubt that we were caught unaware aur ye jo intrusion hui this was basically in the dras area you, if you are aware in the kargil area in the batalik area or what was the aim aim was basically to cut off the national highway which is passing through from shrinagar to zozila kargil and leh then isolating the leh and ladakh and in carrying carry out the interdiction on this highway ताकि जो हमारा रसद है सामान है और लॉजिस्टिक है इट सो दैट ये पहुंच ना पाए ले और लद्दाख को और ले और लद्दाख अलग थल पड़ जाए सियाचन बिकॉज सियाचन भी हमने उनसे लिया था तो उनको दिल में यही तमन्ना है कि जिस तरह हमने सियाचन में किया था वी हैड ऑक्यूपाइड दियाचन शायद उस तरह सा कर पाए पर वो नहीं कर पाए और दूसरा एम यही था कि टू कीप दी थिंग्स अलाइव जो कश्मीर का जो इशू है उसको अलाइव रखा जाए सो दैट वाज देयर एम और जो मैं उस टाइम था तो मेरी यूनिट उस टाइम जो थी आपका जो कश्मीर का इलाका है मानसवल का इलाका है और जो पटन का इलाका है कुपवाड़ा का इलाका है तो माई यूनिट वाज देयर फाइटिंग अगेंस्ट द मिलिटेंट्स और 16 मई 99 को सडनली बी वर यू नो पिकड अप एंड ब्रॉट टू द्रास तो जो द्रास में जो दो मेन फीचर्स हैं बेसिकली तुल होलिंग एंड टाइगर हिल और आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू शेयर विद यू कि इन दोनों लड़ाइयों में मुझे और मेरे एटीन कैनेडियर्स को हिस्सा लेने का मौका मिला एंड स्ट्रेटेजिकली दीज टू पीक्स वर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दे प्रूव टू बी ए टर्निंग पॉइंट लेटर ऑन अगर आप कभी गए हो वहां पर अगर आपने द्रास में वॉर मेमोरियल देखा हो और अगर ऊपर की तरफ आप देखते हैं तो तोलोलिंग इज बिल्कुल सामने दिखता है और इट इज एट दाइट ऑफ तेरह चौदह पंद्रह हजार की हाइट पे है 
टाइगर हिल तकरीबन सोलह सतारह हजार की हाइट पे है लेकिन दोनों ऑपरेशन से बहुत कुछ हमने भी सीखा एंड बोथ दीज ऑपरेशन वर डिफरेंट एंड यू नो जब ये मैं अकेला नहीं था इसमें पूरी इंडियन आर्मी एयरफोर्स नेवी और दूसरे बहुत सारे लॉजिस्टिक और सर्विसेज इसमें हिस्सा लिया तकरीबन तीस हजार के आसपास लोग पूरे इस कारगिल ऑपरेशन की लड़ाई में शामिल हुए थे लेकिन जो एटीन कनेडियर के हिस्से में सबसे पहली लड़ाई आई है वो थी बैटल ऑफ तोलोलिंग और जैसे मैंने बताया कि तोलोलिंग में जब हमने गया हमें आई वॉज ब्रीफ आई वॉज टोल्ड देर आर अबाउट फोर टू फाइव पीपल देयर एंड द मिलिटेंट्स द मुजाहिदीन लेकिन यू विल नॉट बिलीव इट कि इस लड़ाई के लिए हमें तकरीबन 22 दिन लगे और जब हम वहां पे गए वी डेंट हैव एनी इंटेलिजेंस वी डेंट हैव क्लोदिंग दी हाईल्टीट्यूड की जो क्लोदिंग है वो नहीं होनी चाहिए थी एंड यू नो इट इज ए हाई एल्टीट्यूड प्लस सुपर हाई एल्टीट्यूड so you have to have different kind of uh, clothing and special kind of clothing you didn't have that then you need to have the artillery because we were surprised so we didn't have that ad- adequate artillery so tololing was a tough battle and moreover we were told there are four to five people and you will not believe it took for me and 18 grenadiers uh, to 22 days or 13 or 14, 12 और 13 जून को टू राजरीफ के साथ मिलके वी कैप्चर दी पीक ऑफ दी तोलोलिंग बट वी हैड टू पे वेरी हैवी प्राइस आई लॉस्ट 25 ऑफ माय ब्रेव मैन इन दी बैटल ऑफ तोलोलिंग सिमिलरली राजरीफ टू राजरीफ आल्सो पेड अ वेरी हैवी प्राइस वन ऑफिसर टू जेसीयूज एंड सेवन जवान्स दैट इज द टेली व्हिच वाज गिवन फॉर तोलोलिंग एंड तोलोलिंग आई टोल्ड यू इट वाज मोस्ट स्ट्रेटेजिक it proved to be a turning point in the entire battle it had psychological strategical effect it raised the morale of our men the army and the countrymen or tololing lene ke baad next of the task which was given to me was the tiger hill tiger hill you know it is the most dominating feature in the entire dras sector it is the highest point and the enemy had occupied it and he had the clear observation of the dras baul dras is like a baul and he was dominating this national highway as well as this dras township so but we had become wiser now for the operation of the tiger hill like i told you in tololing we had nothing we had lot of uh, uh, you know in adequacy of artillery engineer efforts high altitude equipment clothing you know snow boats uh, like but for the uh, tiger hill i had 120 guns the art- artillery guns i had engineer efforts i had uh, adequate uh, time for carrying out the reconnaissance and uh, for carrying out the rec- uh, the uh, climatization and the reconnaissance so we were prepared well for the operation of the tiger hill and the tiger hill operation was carried on on 4th of july night 3 3rd and 4th when the tiger hill top was captured and uh, it was combined efforts of eight sikh and 18 grenadiers that captured the tiger hill but again we both the units had to pay a very heavy price for this victory on tiger hill like my unit lost nine of our gallant soldiers similarly eight sikh paid a very heavy uh, price for the uh, capture of uh, tiger hill so this is in a broad shell uh, the you know the participation of my unit in the battle of tololing tiger hill and you are aware the 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 enemy there is not the real enemy who is sitting on top he is a defender he is well fortified and the problem is for the attacker who has to climb up there is no oxygen the gradient is very steep and he has to you know carry about 25 kg of uh, load on his back that is your uh, ammunition and his logistic so it is a very it is a very 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 difficult uh, situation like in the battle of tololing i had 22 days the logistic was a nightmare casualty evacuation how do you evacuate casualty like, like i lost 25 of people and there was a uh, many a times when you had to tell a boy that during day time if you have seen that area there are there, there is not even a, a blade of grass there is no vegetation there is nothing there and uh, you know Uh, the enemy can spot you and uh, he had snipers he could he can take uh, take on you there there were instances when the boys got uh, hit on their forehead and uh, they just collapsed 
so casualties were not evacuated during day time and night time we could not uh, light up anything like i lost kanvishwanathan he got very severely win- uh, wounded and we had to pull him back and uh, we took him uh, behind a stone but we could not give him adequate first aid because we could not light up anything he was uh, bleeding so profusely my one boy lost his eyes because we could not evacuate him during day time had we evacuated him during day time perhaps his, his eyes would have been saved because there was so much of time by the time the evening set and we evacuated him and for every man you need about 6 to 8 people to evacuate a single casualties imagine and uh, we didn't take bath for uh, months together and the chapatis and whatever food you know chapatis or some uh, sabji used to come from the down below and uh, there was nothing to you know to heat them up and there was a continuous artillery shelling there was a continuous firing the weather was uh, not uh, very friendly the wind chill effect is so high so it, it is it is you, know, you can just imagine the circumstances under which we the our troops and heads of brave men uh, you know who despite all these odds carried out all this operation on, on the tololing and i told you we paid a very heavy cost on it and the enemy was so uh, fortified you, if you remember on 27th and 28th of may they had a stinger fire um, missile on the top of uh, tololing and 0.5140 and they shot one mi 17 and killing all the crews they had they had machine guns but for the battle of tiger hill i like i told you i had everything it was very well co- coordinated and uh, and the the main uh, Uh, credit for the success goes to our ghataks like the commandos so we the element of surprise and uh, the planning which was made was uh, you know from the behind from the tiger hill from the behind because in front he could see you he could see you the directions you are coming he could count on you he he could bring out pinpoint uh, fire on you it is only the element of surprise that we could get the uh, top and that is how this young boys of uh, yogendra yadav you know despite having uh, got severe injuries about 16 bullets in his hand he still continued and all this, his entire team got wiped out he was the only survivor so these are the difficult things in the challenges uh, the uh, you know uh, he had, the, as a soldier one has to uh, go through so in life there will be many hiccups there will be many weary barriers there will be many short, uh, the failures you know like as a students also you at many times you may be feeling that oh my god i failed in this class i got less marks uh, what can i do it you know so whatever the lessons you want to drive from all this these are the live lessons losing marks or this thing is not that major thing but uh, losing lives and what is it that you know indian soldier is capable and he is always willing he also has families like you he has children he has his old parents he has a wife uh, way back home so what is this which you know uh, he is prepared on the com- on your command he is prepared to give his life you know you, you must think of it what is it he is a normal man like you and me uh, you know he, he is nothing outstanding but what makes him outstanding that he gives his life for the country and especially we must ponder over it think over it deliberate over it when we have the independence day tomorrow coming you know you are the young children you have so many uh, uh, you know avenues to uh, go outside the world and whatever profession you want to pursue whether it is the indian army you want to go to the civil service or you want to have any other profession it is up to you but uh, what do you uh, you know drive so this is basically my interaction with you so i i'll be more than happy if you ask me any sort of a question which may be you know bugging your mind and you want to ask and do not feel hesitant your teachers are there or somebody is there kindly feel free and ask me whatever i feel is my uh, whatever is my capabilities or knowledge i will try to share it with you and because i want to make it more uh, interactive and uh, it is up to you uh, more questions you ask or whatever you ask i will try to tell you uh, the facts and my experience and my perception uh, about the army and about the civil life because uh, uh, after I, i i got retired in 2010 now i am into civil life i have also served in as a gm rotang tunnel project if you heard of rotang tunnel i am now the chairman come managing director of exercise men corporation i am looking after our veer naris the war widows 
our ex servicemen who come home early who get who get retired at the age of 35 45 you know how to rehabilitate them how to resettle them i i am into that work so i am the cmd of that i am also into i also go to the colleges and speak to the children in tech not because that you know i have got so much knowledge to share because you also feel young when you talk to you and uh, so uh, now it is open to you whatever question uh, you uh, you want to ask i'll be too happy to answer those questions yeah please go ahead good morning sir yeah good morning please can you be loud, louder can, i can't hear you so am i audible now yeah a little bit समन्वय हाँ समन्वय इज अ गुड क्वेश्चन सी आर्मी लाइफ इज अ फर्स्टली इट इज अ डिसिप्लिन लाइफ अनलाइक इन सिविल सी एंड इट इज अ स्ट्रक्चर्ड लाइफ बट इट इज वेरी चैलेंजिंग एंड रिवार्डिंग ऑल्सो एंड इट इज अ रेजिमेंटेड लाइफ ऑल्सो यू नो एवरीथिंग इज लुक्ड आफ्टर देयर एंड मोर ओवर इट इज अब एनी कास्ट क्रीड रिलीजन फेथ यू नो इट्स इट्स दैट so you know so so that's what i say ki it is one of the best uh, thing there and the civil life is totally different is totally different it is not structured it is not that disciplined you know it so you, definitely you miss all these things uh, uh, that's what i may say yeah yeah so my second question to you is sir in the modern world is war the only option between problems and solution to between two nations not at all not at all the war is not solution at all it is the last solution it is the last resort main thing is you know even the uh, india has never initiated any war if you see the war we had with uh, whether it is with china or with uh, pakistan we never initiated them it is on their uh, behest but at the same time we have to be ready we have to be capable and uh, you cannot take it that uh, enemy you know you, you know the ill design of the china and uh, pakistan uh, but uh, we have never initiated so but uh, at the same time you got to be uh, capable of it so that there is a deterrent um, uh, on the enemy that uh, they should not uh, uh, you know think of waging a war against uh, against india yeah good morning sir happy independence day in advance thank you nandini same to you Yes, sir. So, sir, my first question to you is: Is there anything that you would like to uh, change in the past, like for the wars or anything? Yeah, it's a good question. But if I look back, uh, I can only say I wish uh, I didn't have uh, uh, those many casualty. I didn't have to lose my uh, family members. You know, like I lost two officers and two JCOs and. 30 jawans of 18 canadians because uh, it's a, it's a, it's a emotional issue but when i look back in hindsight probably we could have not avoided because the situation was that and uh, the war conditions were uh, like that but definitely uh, somewhere uh, in your mind you do think that uh, wish uh, we could have not lost uh, those family members and wish we could have saved them yeah nandini Thank you, sir. We are really delighted to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Happy Independence Day in advance. Yeah. Thank you, Mudit. Sir, my first question is, how, sir, how do you think the Kargil War has changed yours and your family's life? Let me tell you firstly how it changed. But what happened during Kargil? You know, my family was at uh, Delhi. We have separated family quarters. where the families reside and most of the times we are in field and uh, you know our families the children they they grow up alone unlike most of uh, children who stay with their parents near and dear with their relations 
most of the time we don't see our children growing up so during the war when uh, it was the battle of tololing and during the month of june i had three uh, important functions and celebration on 2nd june is the birthday of my daughter 7th 18th june is my marriage anniversary and uh, 26th june is my son's birthday you will not believe in the fog of war and when it was a question of life and death and the casualties were pouring in i did, didn't remember these days and i could not speak to my children i could not speak to my family who was there in delhi and uh, many times it happened i didn't know whether it is day or night because 22 days continuously day and night you can imagine the mental pressure uh, you know uh, at least i as a commanding officer was going through i didn't wish them at all we had the satellite uh, phone where we could speak once in a week or something like that but even i forgot it completely so but yes after the war now i have we have retired it had made made, made us more empathetic more humble more sober and we have seen the life uh, from a close quarter the, the thin line between life and death so maybe that we have become more practical yeah mudit thank you sir yeah good morning sir i am kamya sharma studying in class 12 i would like to ask you if you can tell about few experiences of the families of army personnel during these times pandemic kamna thank you very much uh, i told you it is very emotional like my family was in delhi similarly uh, the families of our jcos of sir jawans they were in the different parts of the country and when the this is the first time that media had entered the battlefield and the casualties were uh, when happening and the their uh, bodies were being taken to their villages this is the first time that they were given a very respectable the funerals and those pictures were pouring on the television many of the families including my wife they had switched off the television they had stopped seeing the uh, television that time so they have gone a very very difficult uh, period uh, that time is a, a, a sort of a trauma and now the children have grown up now they are well settled because in an infantry <coughs> you have very uh, you know closer relations than uh, family with all those uh you know uh, infantry units uh, people will realize that uh, how how the relationships uh, they go on so now they have come out of it but those were the very very difficult days and especially uh, when the bodies uh, bodies were going to the villages uh, and uh, but they coped with it and uh, we uh, uh, remained in touch with them and uh, especially after the casualties had taken place Uh, we ensured that their welfare uh, is looked after by the state government by the center government uh, whether by giving them uh, something for rehabilitation like the petrol pumps or the jobs or the monetary benefits so those were the issues which were taken care of but yes they have even today when they think of uh, that their family member is not there on diwali day or on any festival day they they do miss him they do, of course they have come a long way and uh, Uh, they are leading their own life but somewhere that uh, thing will always remain that they have lost uh, some of their uh, near and dear ones and uh, they miss him they miss him so uh, that 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 is there but yes when it happened uh, it was most traumatic and uh, most difficult time uh, which has uh, been got over now yeah thank you sir good morning sir happy independence day my dons thank you thank you happy independence day kanu as a commanding officer how did you motivate your fellow officers and troops in such difficult situations kana it is not only me who will motivate them we have a very structured system apparatus in place like uh, a raw young boy when he comes to the regimental center the rigorous training which he is undergone and uh, you know then we have that uh, naam namak and nishan यू नो नाम उसके अपना उसके समाज का परिवार का देश का नमक जिस देश प्रदेश का नमक आता है निशान झंडा चाहे वो सर्जिमेंट का या देश का झंडा तो दीज आर दिंग्स विच वी यू नो रियली मोटिवेट हिम एंड देन ही कम्स बैक टू दल्टन जहाँ पे वो जाता है वहां पे ही फैमिली मेंबर 
and uh, he is told his histories the battle histories what the battalion has done earlier so it is a structured system and it is not a press of a button that he is totally suddenly motivated and you know made as a good soldier so it is one lot of uh, you know sweat and blood goes behind this to motivate him to make him a fit soldier so that i and then when he passes out from his training to wo ek kasam khata hai ki agar jeevan mein jab bhi zarurat pade use he has to sacrifice his life he will give his life और वो लाइफ देता है आपने देखा कि किस तरह से पांच रन बांकुरे जो है वो शहीद हुए ये सिर्फ अभी कारगिल की लड़ाई की बात नहीं है आजादी के बाद जितनी भी उन्नीस के बाद आज तक जितनी लड़ाई हुई है एवरी सोल्जर्स जो ये प्रण किया है उसने अपने देश के प्रति एंड ही इज गिवन यू नो ब्लैंक चेक टू दी कंट्री कि भाई जब जरूरत पड़ेगी मैं अपने प्राणों की आहुति जो है देश के लिए देता हूँ एंड ही एवरी टाइम एंड ही हैज फुलफिल्ड promise what he has made to the country and the countrymen so this motivation how do we motivate and the most motivation is by self example agar aap dekhoge ki jitne bhi isme casualties hui hain wo young jawan the young jcus the young officers the unki casualties zyada hui hai because they led from the front aapne naam suna hai captain vikram batra saurav kaliya captain balwan singh captain sachin nivalkar bahut sare officers hue hain sanjay kumar who got the paramveer chakra इस तरह बहुत सारे जेसीयू सुबेदार रणधीर सिंह लाल सिंह सो ऑल दीज पीपल सी दीज आर दी मोटिवेशन दे लेट फ्रॉम द फ्रंट दे लेट फ्रॉम द फ्रंट आई टोल्ड यू दे ऑल्सो न्यू कि आई टोल्ड यू दे आर नॉर्मल ह्यूमन बींग लाइक यू एंड मी दे ऑल्सो हैव दैमिलीज एट बैक वट वट इज इट बट दे लेट फ्रॉम द फ्रंट बिकॉज दे हैव बीन मोटिवेटेड राइट फ्रॉम द डे दे ज्वाइन द आर्मी एंड एवरी डे इज ए मोटिवेशन every day for them is a motivation it is not a one day job or one year job or two year job it is over the period that uh, you have to keep this fellow motivated uh, so that uh, you know they don't fear giving their lives for the country yeah karna good morning Thank sir you, sir. morning morning that's your precious time yeah harshim say, say again please thank you so much for Thank giving you. us precious time sir. thank you thank you arshin so my question to you is sir in army please share what one misses about civilian life in army civilian life yeah like in civilian life you have saturday today holiday sunday you have holidays you go to your friends birthday eh, you go for you know your parents come with you uh, on this uh, monthly school meetings your annual functions your sports function in army we can't do that then i we don't even see our children growing up suddenly you realize that oh my god they have done 12th they have done 10th you don't meet them so definitely you miss them you miss all these small small things but they are not small they are very big things in life you miss social life you don't interact when you come back after retirement like me you feel isolated because uh, like 35 years i was in the army so now to cover up 35 years how do i cover up so you miss her by the children have grown up some of them are married so you have miss uh, that beautiful time which you should have spent together with them so all these thing are seen definitely you miss so many things uh, in life but then there is no remorse uh, you know it is okay somewhere you are compensated you are looked after by the army you are physically mentally fit somewhere you are rewarded you are happy you are more joyful uh, so that is how one has to uh, you know find a balance but yes uh, being in army you have so many uh, restrictions on you maybe that sometime there is a death in the family uh, most of the times you are not even like my father died uh, i could reach after a week firstly the information never came there was no system of mobile phone or other phones and all that but you definitely miss throughout your life that you were not there at the right place at the right time so these these are the hassles these these are the part of the package uh but uh, you know one has to take it in a stride yeah ashin thank you so much sir good morning sir good morning sandhya sir first and foremost happy independence day for tomorrow same to you sir can you please tell us that how kargil war was different from other indo pak wars of 1965 and 1971 65, 71. You are aware they were full-fledged war, free for all. Kargil war was a limited war. It was only fought in a limited, uh, you know, terrain. 
in limited sector you see that air force was only uh, air force or the military was not uh, used across the border uh, so th these were the limitation limitations and uh, it was confined to a particular area the entire indian army or the pakistan army was not involved the entire power of the defense services were not utilized so to that extent yes uh, it was a different war and uh, then uh, it is a different war that uh, till now such a, you know the war at such a altitude was never fought it was a time when these weapons like your buffers they are basically indirect weapon firing but they were also used in the direct fire role this was the war which was uh, fought in super high altitude this is the war where the young officers you know they did miracles uh, for this one. so in many way the kargil war is not comparable to the uh, conventional war uh, like uh, 71 65 it was limited war yes sir thank you sir thank you good morning sir morning so happy independence day in advance yeah who is it akshit yes yes sir. Sir. yeah yeah happy 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 independence day yes sir so thank you so why it is said that kargil war was the outcome of int failure yeah i told you in my briefing also initially you know the pakistani had ill design and during winters we used to there was an understanding that you know uh, both the countries the both the army used to vacate the uh, winter uh, you know winter vacated post there was the it is, it is not uh, possible to uh, stay there for longer so it was an understanding but i told you ki ek bahut bada vishwasgat dhoka unhone pehli baar kiya ki they came uh, and they occupied all these places and it was a uh, almost uh, ek uh, 150 uh, square kilometer area it's not a small area so yes, yes it was uh, initially it was a intelligence failure we could not uh, uh, you know make out that they will do this mischief but they did it so yes it is uh, but now uh, we have occupied every inch of land our surveillance is better uh, we are holding that ground we are carrying out regu regular patrollings and all that so things are better but yes initially there was a some uh, coordination problem uh, that the intelligence was not forthcoming yeah Thank you, sir. Good yeah. morning, sir. Happy Independence Day, Nikhil. Yeah, Happy Independence Day. So my question is, why militants come to India? Why? Say again. So I. So why militants come? Ah, <laughs> why militants come to India? Yes, yeah, yeah yeah because you know uh, pakistan is the superior you know from the defense point of view economic point of view and you know what is the situation in pakistan there is lot of poverty there is lot of unemployment there is lot of religious ind indoctrinations and you know the madrasas what they teach there so these are the things and secondly the kashmir is the issue which pakistan wants to keep alive and these militants are basically the criminals you know who are there and then they are given money and they are assured that their families will be taken care of and if you come alive you will get this much more money and all that so that is how these militants are uh, you know indoctrinated in a wrong way and uh, they they are pushed this side uh, to be killed and you know the how how these people uh, they come across and uh, how they they are killed Uh, but that is the reason because firstly there is an employment uh, the uh, from the defense point of view they cannot afford a full fledged war conventional war so they this is known as proxy war you know this is known as uh, low cost uh, uh, conflict you know so keep it low uh, so that it it should it will not cost them more so they cannot afford to go for conventional war so these are the reason that you know they keep sending these militants so the issue is kept alive and uh, these criminals are sent here basically uh, the militants on they call it mujahideen yeah rithik pardon so what motivates them to come here i told you na motivation is money motivation is unemployment motivation is poverty 
that is why they, it is mo motivating them to come here and then you know the isi there is keeping the issue of kashmir alive they want to keep the Kash issue of the uh, kashmir alive so that they can internationalize it so what does they achieve by that hello so what does they achieve by doing they that achieve, they achieve they achieve by that that they keeping the uh, issue alive so that uh, uh, you exploit the people against uh, each other country so there is enmity so that uh, we have uh, the you know the pakistani uh, they have the grudges against the indians and the leaders who are there you know that so that they divert their attention from this poverty from unemployment from their other problems and they will say okay now the kashmir is issue kashmir is issue let's unite let's do this uh, india has done like this we will do like this so it so it uh, helps their leadership to keep this issue alive otherwise they will not achieve anything thank you sir it was a wonderful opportunity to have a conversation with you thank, thank you, you so thank much you, thank you thank you sir good morning sir morning happy independence day in advance sir thank you naman so my question is uh, to you is that uh, so we know that uh, kargil happened 20 years ago so sir is there any chance that it can happen again no no question no question we told you initially there were some uh, intelligence uh, hiccups but now we are like i said we are occupying uh, all the critical features we have better surveillance we have better weaponries we have uh, better preparations so all these things have been uh, taken into account there is no question uh, the kargil happening again yeah okay. thank you sir good morning sir first of all a very happy independence day in advance thank you anand so so my question is that sir can you tell us about any real time experiences or challenges that the soldiers face whenever they are cut off from the rest of the world during heavy rainfall or snowfall oh there are many some of them i shared with you you know like uh, the winters are very severe the temperatures are minus 40 minus 50 and it is not during kargil war that uh, i was there even i commanded dras brigade for 3 years thereafter and i had about 80 winter vacated post you know winter post we call them and uh, We we used to send our men uh, there in some time in uh, August, September, August, and get them next year in June, July. So almost ten, eleven months these boys used to be there. And whenever even there are problems at home, we could not get them because most of the places even the heli helicopters could not land. Maybe there are no helipads, or the uh, because of the weather conditions, the helicopters could not land. And there has been numerous examples. Uh, when we had these glaciers coming up when we had these avalanches coming up and uh, jawans dying because of that and uh, the posts are cut off sometime you even can't communicate for days together with those posts you don't know whether they are alive or uh, this thing many times it happened that i i can quote one incident that one officer he lost his father and uh, he said that i want to go and uh, i don't care if there is avalanche or something then we had to speak to his family members and tell him look please uh, tell this boy uh, that you know wait for some time let the weather be all right we will get him evacuated but the fact remains that he could not be there uh, for the funeral of his father we could not get him there were instances when uh, you know people were to get married and they were to go on leave uh, but uh, the, the, suddenly there was a heavy snowfall and these posts were cut off we could not get them down or the helicopter didn't come at all and uh, the people had already gathered at his home then we had to speak to uh, their parents or to the groom's parents that don't worry don't worry the boy is okay they thought probably the boy is doesn't want to come he is doing it deliberately so there were number of situation that you have when the posts get cut off and most of the time uh, you know uh, in peace time this is the most difficult time to manage uh, these uh, men uh, you know who are at the pickets you are alone imagine if you are there for 6 to 7 months in a post which is just by 50 to 60 meter you have to spend everything time you have to melt the snow and then you know have the water to drink or to cook your food there is no dearth of food there is no dearth of kerosene you have plenty but you can't eat it 
and by the time when i used to interview them when they used to come down everybody has lost 10 kg 15 kg of weight they were so skinny as if you know this thing that is how it takes in those areas super high altitude areas where you have all this logistic problems you have these uh, health problems you know uh, and it is very very difficult to manage uh, during winter period uh, these cut off posts yeah thank you so much sir thank you so much yeah good morning sir good morning happy independence day sir in advance uh, who is speaking i can't see sir devshish guru of class 10 uh, who is called devshish yes devshish so as we know that few days back uh, an army person uh, mr uh, neera chopra won a gold medal in uh, olympics 2020 so how was your experience as an army no no we felt very happy <laughs> neera chopra got the gold medal in uh, javelin we are very proud as indian and we are very proud as uh, soldiers uh, because uh, he did uh, laurels to the country and to the indian army he is from uh, rajputana rifles he was picked up by the army in 2016 trained and uh, he got uh, many gold medals uh, in asian games commonwealth games and finally with his hard work and training and all that he got the gold medal for all of us and uh, indian army has been doing very well uh, in uh, olympics itself we have got uh, seven uh, medals uh, three by major dhyan chand you are aware hockey wizard and uh, he got three gold medal one now javelin uh, neeraj chopra has got it four you are aware you have heard the name of karnan rajyavardhan rathor and you have heard the name of subhadar vijay kumar they both did proud in uh, shooting they got uh, silver medal and similarly in hockey we got kanar balveer singh who got the bronze medal so seven medal by the army itself our one by in in the in the olympics i am talking about the olympics so army has a very major, major contribution and now uh, first time in athletics uh, in the history of india Uh, we have got this uh, medal individual medal in javelin and that too in gold so my congratulations to you all and we uh, have lot of expectations from you guys also to do well right from the beginning and uh, i i i'll request the government that we have 2024 and 2028 and we have uh, mission uh, you know india or mission olympics uh, and uh, army we are carrying out right from 2001 so we want uh, youngsters like you to join the forces and uh, then be part of this and uh, bring laurels to your country and to the indian army thank you jitendra yes thank you devish sir, sir the, this doesn't mean so that uh, we can't do anything uh, when we join army no no you can do many things you can the army has a lot of scopes sports adventures you know whatever you want to do this is the best profession if i am given chance i would like to join the indian army again so indian army has lot of yes. things to offer to the youth like you yes sir thank you sir so i feel so glad to talk to you thank you devshish good morning sir morning sir can you describe how you felt coming home after the war yeah it is a mixed feeling uh, manish because i had lost my 20 34 members of my family and we were together right from 1976 when i got commissioned into that family and we were together till 1999 and when i took those 900 men there but 34 i could not bring back so i was going home so it it, it of course there was a sense of pride and uh, that yes my boys have done this for us we have uh, got victory in kargil over various peaks tololing or tiger hill but somewhere it, it was in your mind also that yes uh, we are going back but we have lost we have left many behind in those peaks and uh, i make it a point uh, during kargil vijay divas whenever there is a function to go back and just as a solace to spend some time there so when i went back yes you were very happy that you are meeting your children you are meeting your parents you are meeting your relatives friends neighbors but somewhere uh, this thing this feeling this emotional uh, feeling 
was also there yeah thank you sir thank you good morning sir so happy independence in advance first thank you thank you so my question to you is that sir this time it is said that pakistan will have a different approach supported by china as well so sir does indian army has the capability to fight at two fronts at the same time uh, don't worry don't worry we are quite capable you have seen it now you have seen it galwan uh, how the china was given the response and you seen the uh, what is happening in, happening in kashmir the militants uh, the, you know the activities have gone down and uh, we have carried out bala court we have carried out many other operation across the uh, international border so we are quite cap capable uh, they are not in a uh, position to take on us uh, let them unite yeah thank you sir yes sir thank you thank you so what are your tips to the students aspiring for officer ranks in army <laughs> yeah i would like you to join uh, the right uh, age for you to join an nda i am a combined uh, you know cds exam women entry there is a women entry so i want to want you to join force, uh, forces but you join if you have passion and you really want to join it because uh, yes outside it may look rosy it is rosy there is no doubt but then there are a lot of uh, uh, you know re requirements fr from a person that firstly he should be motivated he should he should have a passion and the training and everything we do it there you don't worry but yes you should have uh, passion uh, you know you should have that uh, zanoon or jazwa uh, that i want to do something i want to go for it but my this thing is now the uh, opportunities are so much the technology is so vast you have every opportunity every profession is good so this is the time you are young and do don't think too much of studies yes carry out studies because you are been left by your parents to carry out studies but at the same time take out some time for your sports you know khoob padho khoob khelo khelna bhi zaruri hai khoob khelo aur khoob padho so both things are very important at this stage and once you become um, you know grown up then the life problem will start this time will not come to you so now play hard okay and study well and uh, decide what you want to do discuss with your teachers who are quite capable competent discuss with your parents you know it it is a combination of students teachers and parents and you have to take a collective call that uh, what you should do in life but whatever you do my best wishes and uh, you take your own decision finally what you want to do don't leave it to parents also that they want to make you engineer doctor they want to make you something but it is your personal call that is my personal thing and if you ask me i would like you to all uh, you know uh, the lovely boys and girls to join the armed forces thank you sir उधर उधर या बात कर रहे हैं या सर कैप्टन विनय विनय सर या सर आई रिक्वेस्ट सर इफ ऑल स्टूडेंट्स हैव फिनिश्ड विद देयर सेशन ऑफ डाउट्स दैट आई गिव द स्मॉल क्लोजिंग एड्रेस सर एंड आई वुड आल्सो लाइक टू रीट्रीट द बायोडेटा एंड लाइफ हिस्ट्री ऑफ Our esteemed speaker today here, Brigadier Kushal Thakur. Yeah, yeah, you are welcome to do that. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, uh, good morning, sir. Principal APS Jammu and all my dear students. Uh, Brigadier Kushal Thakur, YSM Youth Seva Medal, retired, was commissioned in the 18 Grenadiers in December 1976. He was the first officer to be commissioned in the unit post its raising. Brigadier Kushal Thakur has participated in a plethora of operations with vast experience across the entire spectrum of conflict. The brigadier has many feathers in his hat. Prior to the op vijay as commanding officer of 18 Grenadiers, the unit was deployed in counterinsurgency task where the unit was awarded 20 awards during op rakshak under his iconic leadership. in supervision the unit recaptured tiger hill and tololing during the limited war against pakistan thus affecting the enemy from their well dug in defenses in the icy heights of dras region post the conflict the unit earned the brave title of bravest of the brave and emerged as the most decorated unit of kargil war it was awarded chief of army staff unit citation besides 52 gallantry awards in recognition for his bravery outstanding bravery distinguished leadership and meritorious services 
Brigadier Kushal Thakur was awarded Youth Seva Medal. Uh, a few uh, point on Youth Seva Medal for all the children here. The Youth Seva Medal is one of the India's military decorations for distinguished service during wartime. It is awarded for a high degree of distinguished service in an operational context which includes time of war, conflict or hostilities and may be awarded posthumously. Just after the Kargil conflict, the Brigadier had the distinction of leading 18 Grenadiers in Op Rockberry in Sierra Leone under the aegis of UNPKF where the Indian contingent rescued over 250 hostages held by the RUF military. The unit not only performed outstandingly in the operations but also was equally illustrious with the peacekeeping activities and measures which were being constantly adjudged by a large number of dignitaries visiting the unit from the United Nations. Brigadier Thakur has the eminence of having participated in Op Pavan in Sri Lanka as a company commander post his retirement since 2010. He has been actively participating in social service, advocating the cause of ex-servicemen, farmers and youth. He is happily married to Mrs. Bhagwati Thakur and they have a son and daughter. Sir, it has indeed been a privilege for us to have you here on the 75th Independence Day celebrations. Thank you, sir. And also AP, Principal APS Jammu uh, for all the coordination and uh, wishing all the students a very